What's up guys, Nashti here and welcome back to my channel. So recently sinimulan natin yung bagong segment dito sa aking vlog where I've listed down some smartphones, you know, best smartphones that you can buy per price bracket. So weeks ago, I gave you the 5 best smartphones that you can buy for less than 5,000 pesos. Some of which are pretty good, you know, remember Realme C2. Redmi 7A and Redmi Go from Xiaomi. So I hope na gusto hanyo at na appreciate niyo yung vlog episode nayon. So on this vlog episode, I'll be coming up with a list of five best smartphones that you can buy from 5,000 to 10,000 pesos. Of course, these are phones which were released Q1 and Q2 of this year, which is 2019. So pwede natin pa. Let's get down to business because it's about to get nasty. Isang paalala, ang video na ito ay hindi katang isip lamang. Ito ay pinag-isipan na talagang pinaghirapan. Kaya huwag kalimutang ilike at mag-subscribe sa aking YouTube channel. I-follow mo namin ako sa Facebook, Twitter, at Instagram. Let's start off with the Redmi Note 7 by Xiaomi. It packs a glass front and back panel. It has a 6.3 inch IPS LCD of 1080p Full HD resolution protected by Gorilla Glass 5. It runs Android 9 Pie with MIUI 10 on top and is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 chipset. It comes in 32, 64, or 128 gigs of expandable storage with 3, 4, or 6 gigs of RAM. It has a 48 megapixel primary camera with a 5 megapixel depth sensor. It also has a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Connectivity wise, it has everything you need except for NFC. It has a 4000 mAh battery with 18 watts fast charge support. It has a 3.5mm audio jack, an FM radio, a fingerprint scanner, and an LED notification light. It retails for 7,990 pesos and it was released March of 2019. What I like about the Redmi Note 7 is its Gorilla Glass 5 protection, its high resolution display, its capable chipset, its high resolution camera, and fast charging support. Then we have the Realme 3, which comes with a glass front and plastic body. It has a 6.22 inch IPS LCD of 720p HD resolution, protected by Gorilla Glass 3. It runs Android 9 Pie with Color OS 6 on top and is powered by a MediaTek Helio P60 processor. It has 32 or 64 gigs of expandable storage and 3 or 4 gigs of RAM. It has a 13 megapixel primary camera assisted by a 2 megapixel depth sensor. It also has a 13 megapixel selfie camera. Connectivity wise, it has everything you need but it also comes with a micro USB 2.0 port. It has a large 4230 mAh battery with 10 watts charging. It has 3.5mm jack, FM radio, and a fingerprint scanner. It retails for 6,490 pesos and it was released in March 2019. What I like about the Realme 3 is its Gorilla Glass 3 protection, its dedicated micro SD card slot, and its larger battery capacity. What I don't like is its slow 720p HD display, its old micro USB 2.0 port, and the lack of fast charging support. Next, we have the Samsung Galaxy M20 which features a glass front and plastic body. It has a 6.3 inch PLS TFT display of 1080p Full HD resolution. It runs Android 9 Pie with One UI on top and is powered by an Exynos 7904 processor. 
It has 32 or 64 gigs of expandable storage and 3 or 4 gigs of RAM. It has a 13 megapixel primary camera with a 5 megapixel ultra wide secondary camera. It also has an 8 megapixel selfie camera. Connectivity wise, it has everything you need, including a USB C 2.0 port. It has a large 5000 mAh battery with a 15 watts fast charging support. It has a 3.5mm audio jack, an FM radio, and a fingerprint scanner. It retails for 6,990 pesos and was released in March 2019. What I like about the Samsung Galaxy M20 is its dedicated micro SD card slot, its ultra wide angle secondary camera, its large battery capacity, and fast charging support. Up next, we have the Huawei Y7 Pro 2019, which comes with a glass front and plastic body. It has a 6.26-inch IPS LCD of 720p HD resolution. It runs Android 8.1 Oreo with EMUI 8.2 on top and is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 chipset. It has 32 gigs of expandable storage and 3 gigs of RAM. It has a 13 megapixel primary camera assisted by a 2 megapixel depth sensor. It also has a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Connectivity wise, it has everything you need. It also has a 4000 mAh battery with 10 watts charging. It has a 3.5 mm audio jack, an FM radio, and an LED notification light. It retails for 6,990 pesos and it was released in February of 2019. What I like about the Huawei 7 Pro 2019 is its dedicated micro SD card slot, its high resolution selfie camera, and its LED notification light. What I don't like is its low 720p HD display, its dated micro USB 2.0 port, and the lack of fast charging support. Last but definitely not the least is the Nokia 3.2. It has a glass front and plastic body. It comes with a 6.26 inch IPS LCD of 720p HD resolution. It runs Android 9 Pie and is part of the Android One program. It is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 429 chipset. It has 32 gigs of expandable storage and 3 gigs of RAM. It has a single 13 megapixel primary camera and a 5 megapixel selfie camera. Connectivity wise, everything is covered, including a dated micro USD 2.0 port. It has a large 4000 mAh battery with 10 watts charging support. It has a 3.5 mm audio jack, an FM radio, a fingerprint scanner, and an LED notification light. It retails for 6,990 pesos and was released in July of 2019. What I like about the Nokia 3.2 is its dedicated micro SD card slot, its being part of the Android One program, and its LED notification light. What I don't like is its 720p HD display, its old micro USB 2.0 port, and its lack of fast charging support. So of course, the smartphones that you've seen, most of them uh, are priced between 6,000 and 8,000 pesos. Because actually, there's not a lot of phones in the Philippines priced between like 8 and 10,000 pesos. So, and this a much lower range, no 5 to 10,000 pesos, which is of course good for us buyers. I think very tight your competition among these smartphones because all of them 
really have something to offer. But in the end, we've seen that it's the Redmi Note 7 that really ticks most of the boxes for a you know for a lower mid-range smartphone. So let me know if you agree with with this you know assessment or review of mine. So the susunod na mga vlog episodes will come up with a list of you know best smartphones that you can buy from 10,000 to probably 20,000. Let's see. So thank you so much guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Only here on the channel where Nashti is nice. I'm Nashti. Till then.